My name is Brian Grison, and these drawings here at Deluge Gallery, 20 drawings, are called Relics of Prester John. Prester John was a medieval character, a mythical king of a lost Christian civilization that was invented. The character Prester John was invented by, I believe, an Italian traveler in the Middle East, sending letters back to his family or his friends in Italy. I think the original letter was written in Latin. I've seen it, uh, or I've seen at least a reproduction of it. Um, but I didn't know about any of that until I discovered a book about him in the mid-1970s. My first experience of Prester John was when I read the novel Prester John, written in 1910 by the English author John Buchan. And that the name of Prester John has always stayed with me since then, and certain uh, frightening elements from the book has remained with me all these years. But the actual novel and the reading of that novel is not that significant for these drawings, except to the extent that the drawings deal with the history of my own work. And certainly by the time I was 10 years old, I thought of myself as an artist. Now, one of the questions I've been asked by a lot of people is why the cubes, and in particular the Necker cubes, in so many of these drawings. So let's look at this particular drawing here. <clears throat> now, this is a solid Necker cube in that parts of it are missing, so you're not aware of the optical illusion that Necker cubes are all about. Uh, Normally, in a Necker cube, the foreground and the background are constantly flipping, as they do in a few of these drawings. In this drawing, the cube is, has a disembodied and atmospheric quality. It's floating somewhere in the air. And in this drawing, the cube refers directly to its source in the shift from two-dimensional grids to three-dimensional grids. And in this case, the two-dimensional grid is disguised as a pattern of small leaf-like shapes that sort of zigzag all over the picture plane. This drawing here is made with pen and ink, graphite, sepia ink, colored pencil, and collage. It's untitled. A tentative title, which is, which is sort of scribbled on, this, on the marginalia, is Red Sky at Night. But that probably will not be the final title for these drawings. In these drawings, the cube is representative of the idealization of nature, the grid, or the brick, were the first inventions to control nature. So the cube, in a way, is the ideal platonic view of nature. But I also use the cube in a completely mundane way to represent the basic unit of everything that exists in the universe. And these drawings include, because these drawings are doodles, unending doodles, in that I'm constantly reworking them, they include collage of things that I find, copies of other people's drawings, uh, bits of pornography, uh, pin-up girls specifically, uh, imaginary drawings, uh, commentary in the marginalia, practicing techniques, sketches, 
around the actual drawing. And as, as somebody recently suggested in a review, they look like the titles, they look like the covers of paperback novels. In that respect, they might refer back to the book that I read when I was a kid. Now another question I've been asked is whether or not these are a kind of a nostalgic re-exploration of my childhood. Let's look at another drawing to discuss that. Let's look at this one here. <clears throat> This drawing here deliberately has uh, a kind of a young teenage, teenage boy's um, fantasy of the universe, stars and outer space things. And there's a lot of outer space things in a lot of my drawings. Because when I was a kid, I was interested in rocket ships and airplanes and things, you know, things to do with outer space, things to do with space travel. Uh, so I'm re-exploring all the things that interested me, the history of things that have interested me in my drawings. And I'm deliberately also exploring the history of my own art. And I made lots of drawings when I was a teenager of outer space phenomena. <clears throat> However, th th there, is, there is nothing nostalgic about these drawings. Nostalgia is a kind of an emotion, an attitude that I'm very suspicious of. It suggests that things were better in the past than they are now. And uh, broadly speaking, I don't think that's the case in my own life. Uh, I, 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 I didn't particularly have a happy childhood, so I don't feel much nostalgia about that. However, in a way, the drawings are kind of a reinvention of my life. So in a way, they are nostalgic. If, if, if I was to use that word, they're nostalgic about a world, about a life that I would have liked to have had, but never did. It sort of reminds me of when I was very young. I was always envious of boys who lived down the street because they had all these fabulous big toy trucks. like trucks that were probably two feet long, metal, and, and like they really worked, really beautiful trucks. I don't think they were Tonka toys. I don't think that existed yet. Uh, but whatever, I would have wanted to have things like that. So in a way, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm um, playing with the things that I would have wanted to play with as a youngster or as a teenager in these drawings. I've also been asked why, in my introduction to this show, I say that these drawings are incomplete. I'm interested in the idea that a drawing, a work of art, is never complete. In a sense, it's complete only when I die. Although, it can still be interpreted in new ways and it can gather new meaning after I die. But I like the notion that every time a new idea, a new material, a new layer of technique, or whatever, comes to me. I rework each drawing. This drawing in particular, uh, which I started in June, June, 9, uh, June 19 last year, is still incomplete. I don't know what to do with it, but I am not satisfied with it. Uh, the, the tentative title is First Thoughts Toward the Invention of Light. But there will be many other things happening to this drawing, so the title will undoubtedly change. This drawing may require years to be finished.